In this step byte, we'll discuss how to convey state from an accessibility perspective. Users of accessibility services need to know the state of a view so they can properly interact with that view. For example, they want to know, is the button enabled or disabled? Is the switch on or off? Is the checkbox checked or unchecked? And so on. When working with common controls and built-in views, you mostly don't have to worry about conveying the view state to the user, since this is already done for you. Typically, screen readers like TalkBack announce the text label for a view, along with information about the type and the state of that view. For example, if an interface has a checkbox element, the screen reader determines whether the element is checked and announces checked or not checked, along with the text label that you provided. You should not add checkbox state to the text label. If you include checked or not checked in that label, the user might hear this information twice, so avoid doing that. But sometimes you want to do something custom and you want to convey the state of a control to the end user. Example, you've built a star on star widget, say for bookmarking or starring an item in a list, and you want to tell the user whether it is currently starred or unstarred. Enter the state description API. You can use this API to set or get a view's state description. A state description is a string that should succinctly describe the state of a view. This information can then be used by accessibility services who can best determine how that state should be presented to the end user. For example, for the star on star widget, an accessibility service like TalkBack could announce starred or unstarred, followed by double tap to toggle to tell the user the current state of the widget and the action that that user must take to change that state. A state description should be a localized string, which can be translated into the user's preferred language. It should be clear, so users understand what is happening, but also brief, so users can efficiently learn about the view state without listening to a lengthy announcement. You are no doubt familiar with the content description attribute on a view. So how is a content description different from a state description, you're probably wondering. Simply put, a state description changes frequently while a content description remains mostly unchanged. Let's make this clear with a couple of examples. If you want to describe a static image or an image button, use a content description. If you have a widget that shows the signed-in status of a user, use a state description. The signed-in status changes, after all. In the Tasks Tracker app that we've been using in the DevBytes series, we decided that when a TalkBack user focuses on a single task in a list of tasks, we would consolidate that task's description into one single announcement. We set the start status using the state description API since the user can toggle the start status while exploring the list of tasks. And for other fields, like the task description, the assignee, etc., we use the content description API, since these fields don't change in a list context. TalkBack, or another accessibility service, will combine the state description and the content description in a way that it feels best helps the user. In some versions of TalkBack, the end user could even configure the order of those announcements. You, the developer, should generally not try to coerce a particular order. Let the accessibility service figure out best how to convey your view's content and state to the user. I should mention that there are some APIs that convey state without strings, like set enabled or set checked. Since these APIs have a semantic meaning that generally strings lack, they should be preferred to state descriptions when they apply. Okay, let's briefly now talk about forms and form fields. When conveying that a form field, say an edit text, is in an error state, use TextView's setError method so each accessibility service can handle the error in the most appropriate way. In general, avoid using color alone to denote an error state. In this example, the error state is only communicated with a colored line, which could be missed by a colorblind user. But in this example, the text field error state is communicated through multiple cues, title, color, text field, stroke, 
and an error message below the field. You are no longer relying on color alone to convey state. To summarize, for most built-ins, avoid adding a controls state in the text label, since this information is likely already provided by the accessibility service. Use a state description to convey the custom state of elements when the state is likely to change. Use a content description for static content and never rely on color alone to show that a form element is in an error state. Thank you for watching.